today's class is about classification of malabsorption as you all know uh, there is a basic classification which is introduced by angles and angles are classified malabsorption into three types that is class 1 class 2 and class 3 class 1 is the mesobuccal cusp on of the upper first permanent molar occludes in the buccal groove of lower first permanent molar that is class 1 malabsorption uh, second uh, next is class 2 that is mesobuccal cusp of distobuccal cusp of maxillary first permanent molar occludes in the buccal groove of mandibular first permanent molar and class 3 malocclusion is when the mesobuccal cusp of maxillary first permanent molar occludes in the interdental area between interdental space between upper and lower first and second permanent molars this is a basic classification which is introduced by angles similarly the um, molar lesion uh, si similarly how the molar lesion is classified the canine has also been classified into class 1 class 2 and class 3 and canine relation is class 1 when the mesial slope of maxillary canine coincides with the distal slope of lower canine that's when you call a class 1 canine relation this is class 2 canine relationship this is when the distal slope of maxillary canine coincides with the uh, mesial slope of lower distal slope of maxillary canine coincides with the mesial slope of lower canine or when the mesial slope of upper canine is ahead of the distal slope of lower canine this is uh, when you call a class 2 canine relationship this is class 3 canine relationship when the mesial slope of upper canine lies behind the distal slope or when uh, when it lies in between the two premolars that is when you call a class 3 canine relationship this is simon's classification <clears throat> as you all know the main drawback of angles classification is angles are classified malocclusion only in a single plane anteroposterior or sagittal plane and he considered first permanent molar as a fixed point in the skull and uh, there are uh, different planes of space that is and there are basically three planes anteroposterior vertical and transverse plane and malocclusion can also occur in these three planes so simon has put forward a craniometric classification of malocclusion that is related to dental arches in all three planes so the he uh, introduced three reference planes that is frankfurt horizontal plane orbital plane and mid sagittal plane and he classified malocclusion based on these planes first coming to frankfurt horizontal plane this is a plane that connects the upper margin of external lottery meatus to the infraorbital margin and this is used to classify malocclusions in the vertical plane so the dental arch or part when the dental arch or, or part of it is closer than normal to this frankfurt horizontal plane it is called as attraction and when the dental arch or part of it is farther away from the frankfurt horizontal plane it is called abstraction this is basically frankfurt horizontal plane is basically used to classify malocclusions in the vertical plane next is orbital plane and this is a perpendicular this plane is a perpendicular this plane is perpendicular to frankfurt horizontal plane drawn from the bony orbital margin directly under the pupil of eye so uh, this is basically perpendicular to frankfurt horizontal plane and is drawn from the orbital margin directly under the pupil and according to simon this plane should pass through the distal third of upper canines and this is called as simon's law of canine so he used to describe the malocclusions in the sagittal or anteroposterior plane so he used orbital plane to classify malocclusions in the anteroposterior plane and the if the dental arch or part of it is farther away from the orbital plane it is called protraction and if it is closer to the orbital plane it is called retraction so he used orbital plane to classify malocclusions in the anteroposterior plane next is a mid sagittal plane the mid sagittal plane is used to describe the malocclusions in the transverse plane so Uh, if the part or whole of the arch is away from the mid sagittal plane it is called distraction and if it is closer to the mid sagittal plane it is called contraction so basically simon's classification he introduced and he used three reference planes to classify malocclusions in three planes of space the three reference planes were frankfurt horizontal plane orbital plane and the mid sagittal plane frankfurt horizontal plane he used to classify malocclusions in the vertical plane 
and orbital plane used to classify malocclusions in the anthroposterior plane and mid sagittal plane used to classify malocclusions in the transverse plane next is skeletal classification so uh, the skeletal classification considers both the facial skeletal pattern and the relationship of jaws the main drawback one of the major drawbacks of angles classification is also he classified man he doesn't consider the skeletal abnormalities into his classification so we cannot assess whether he or um, he or she is if he or she is having an angles class 1 malocclusion we cannot uh, um, confirm whether the his whether he or she is having a normal skeletal uh, relationship or not so to assess the skeletal uh, abnormalities uh, a skeletal classification has been put forward and similarly there is a skeletal class 1 class 2 and class 3 and in case of skeletal class 1 the bones of face maxilla and mandible are in normal relation to each other so uh, a normal face will have a well balanced face will have a class 1 skeletal relationship maxilla and mandible are normal relation to cranium and the profile is straight next is class 2 uh, the class 1 skeletal malocclusion has four divisions in, in in case of division 1 there will be malposition of incisors canines or premolars in case of division 2 there will be procline maxillary incisors in case of division 3 there will be lingovation of maxillary incisors and in case of division 4 there will be bimaxillary protrusion so the class 1 malocclusion has basically four divisions next is class 2 skeletal malocclusion here them uh, as we all know the class 2 skeletal malocclusion Uh, the mandibular development is retarded when compared to maxilla or uh, can be the reverse also the maxillary development can be excess when compared to mandible also so and there will be distal relationship of mandible to maxilla and okay it is again subdivided into division 1 and division 2 in case of division 1 there will be additional features such as protrusion of maxillary anteriors the maxillary dental arch will be narrow and there will be crowding in the canine re region similarly there will be posterior cross bite and there will be a retrognathic profile this is what we called as a class 2 skeletal malocclusion in case of division 2 there will be retrocline maxillary central incisors and the lateral incisors will be normal or laboratory position this is division 2 so if it if there is a class 2 skeletal class 2 malocclusion it can be either division 1 or division 2 This is skeletal class three malocclusion. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, in case of skeletal class three malocclusion, there will be increased growth of mandible, there will be prognathic profile, and increased mandibular angle. This, so this is the basic skeletal classification, similar to angles classification. Skeletal, skeletally, it has also been classified into class one, class two, and class three. Class one, there will be maxilla and mandible will be normally related to the uh cranium and there will be it is again subdivided into four divisions division 1 2 3 and 4 similarly skeletal class 2 there will be either it can be due to maxillary deficiency or man, maxillary prognathism or mandibular deficiency and it is again divided into division 1 and division 2 similarly class 3 malocclusion it can be due to maxillary deficiency or mandibular prognathism or both and there are no divisions for skeletal class 3 This is incisor classification. It was introduced by British Standard Classification of Incisor Relationship, and this classification is used without considering the molar relation in some cases. So uh, it is basically prone to inter-examiner errors. This is one of the major disadvantages. Let's come into class one incisor relationship. Here, the lower incisor edge occludes with or lie immediately below the cingulum of upper incisors, and the lower incisors lie incisal edges. Lie below the cingulum, just immediately below the cingulum of upper incisor. It's called class one. And if the lower incisor is just lie posterior to the cingulum prominence of the upper incisor, it is called class two. And in case of division one, the upper incisors will be more proclined or uh, or of average inclination, and there will be increase in overjet. In case of division two, upper incisors are proclined and overjet is minimal, but may be increased. So this is a class two relationship. This is class three. Here the lower incisal edges lie anterior to the cingulum prominence of upper incisors. Overjet is reduced, or it will be reverse. 
This is CATS premolar classification, which was introduced in the year 1992. So that uh, we have a molar relationship, canine relationship, uh, incisor relationship, and a premolar classification. So the premolar classification, it is called class one. Then the most anterior upper premolar, that is the first permanent maxillary premolar, fits exactly into the embrasure created by the distal contact of the most anterior lower premolar that is the lower first permanent premolar so the first when the uh, upper maxillary first permanent premolar lies in the embrasure space between lower first and second permanent premolars it is called class one and it is called class two and the most anterior upper premolar that is the first permanent premolar uh, occludes mesial to the embrasure created by the distal contact of lower first permanent premolar so this is when we call a class 2 premolar relationship this is class 3 when the most anterior upper premolar is occluding distal to the embrasure created by the distal contact of most anterior lower premolar this is when we call a class 3 premolar relationship this is ackerman profit classification uh, so Basically, it was introduced to overcome the drawbacks of angles classification. So, um, one of the major drawbacks of angles classification is, as I have told you earlier, considered malocclusions only in the anteroposterior plane. So, uh, Ackerman Profit introduced a classification that classifies malocclusions in all planes. So, uh, in this classification, transverse as well as vertical discrepancies can be considered. Crowding and arch asymmetries can be evaluated, and incisor protrusion is also taken into account. So, this system of classification is based on a Venn symbolic diagram that identifies five major characteristics to be considered and described in the classification. Five major characteristics one is intra arch alignment, second one is profile, uh, third one is type. Type means whether there is any transverse discrepancy, cross bites, is a bite, etc. That comes under the third one. Uh, fourth one is class, whether he or she is having any class, dental or skeletal, class one, class two, class three relationship. And uh, last one is a bite depth in the vertical plane, whether he or she is having, having any abnormality. Group one comes the intra arch alignment and symmetry. So the individual tooth irregularities are described here. Possible malocclusions can be crowding or spacing. And if no abnormality is present, you can call it as ideal. So the first stages or first criteria is alignment, intra arch alignment and symmetry. Second criteria is second group is profile. So the in the Venn diagram, the there will be a complete circle and the outer profile or the uh, full complete circle comes the profile. So the profile can be convex, straight or concave. And in the in this group, you assess the divergence also, whether he or she is orthognathic, uh, anterior divergent or posterior divergent, you assess in the group two. The group three is type, as I have told you, under type, you assess the transverse discrepancies, whether uh, there is any cross bite or scissor bite, uh, you evaluate in the group three. If the cross bite is bilateral or unilateral, uh, buccal or palatal cross bite. Uh, in addition, uh, differentiation is made between skeletal and dental cross bite. This is group four. That uh, under group four comes the class whether he or she is uh, having a dental or skeletal class one, class two, or class three relationship. That is basically in the anteroposterior plane. Uh, he had classified in the group three. This is group five. Uh, under group 5 comes the bite depth that is mainly vertical plane malocclusions are noted. So vertical plane deviations include either there will be an open bite or a deep bite, anterior or posterior, skeletal or dental uh, is assessed basically in the group 4. So the advantages is basically the advantage of profits classification is complexities of malocclusions are explained. All three planes are included. Profile of patient is given due consideration and dental and skeletal abnormalities are differentiated arch length problems are evaluated and it helps in complete diagnosis and treatment plan major disadvantages etiological considerations are not included 
is basically based on a static occlusion. Functional occlusion is not considered. So these are the basic disadvantages of profits classification. So today we had discussed about the basic angles classification that we all know that is uh, not needed to be discussed anymore. So angles classification, uh, Nessus canine classification, Simon's classification, uh, incisor classification, cat's premolar classification, and profits classification. So these are the uh, points that are to be uh, discussed under the classification of malocclusion. So this can ask, this can be uh, an essay question or it can also come as a short note. All these classifications, whether uh, it, a profits classification can come as a short note or even Simon's classification come, come as a short note. So this is an important topic for your university exams. Thank you.